hey, in Zane in the membrane. My name is Novena Carmel, back here on School Night with Zane Carney, who just, <laughs> I don't even know what the word is for what you just did on stage. That was crazy. I didn't expect all that. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I'm not, I'm not sure I know either. <laughs> Thank you. Every day, are you like experimenting a little bit every time you perform? Yeah. yeah. I tend to, uh, you mean every time I perform? Yeah, yeah. A million percent. Yeah, yeah. I never played the same song twice. I love recording stuff and getting it right, but... Yeah, even the rhythm guitar parts I change every night. It's mm -hmm. just fun for me. Yeah. I like doing that. Another form of expression. Yeah, and I come from a jazz background, so I was talking to my girlfriend today, like classical music, pop, all that stuff, I love it. I, I It's my favorite thing to listen mm -hmm. to, classical, but at the end of the day, I'm a jazz musician, so everything mm. I play is in the moment. Okay, yeah. so that's what you would say makes you a jazz musician, playing in the moment. I think so. The yeah. art of improvisation is one of my favorite things. So, But I always keep the melodies the same, so the viewers aren't like, what the heck is happening? <laughs> right. Like, but the stuff underneath, that's for me. Something to sing along to. Yeah, this is for you, <laughs> this is for me. Yeah. And when you say background, I mean, is that from like the schooling you went to? Or is that your family? Or? That was ma mainly, I was a kid, and uh, my parents were into the Beatles and Billy Joel and a lot of great stuff. And then when I was 12, I discovered a guy named Wes Montgomery, this yeah. jazz guitar, so I'm sure you know about. Yes. And I tagged my mom in the kitchen. She was washing dishes. I'm sure I made this story more poetic than it was. It probably, <laughs> none of these things happened. <laughs> but what did happen is I said, why didn't you ever teach me about jazz? I don't ah. know. It's not really your, our fa your father and my thing. I was like, well, this is how my brain works. Whatever he's doing is how my brain works. And then I sought to figure out how he was doing it and within a, a couple months I was like yep I'm a jazz guitarist that's what I'm doing whoa mm -hmm. were you already playing music at that point a little bit my yeah. brother was more the singer of the okay. family and my sister um, long story short I had like a vocal birth defect so I, I didn't oh. know about it until I was 27 oh, wow. so I just couldn't really sing until I was 27 uh, but I'm what? only 19 Hollywood uh -huh. so Hollywood. I want to keep that clear no um, <laughs> uh, I'm 57 that's not true either uh, so so I uh, yeah so I get to focus on guitar and uh, an oboe, but that was another thing. Oh, whoa, cool. Yeah. How do, okay, uh, you said you had a vocal defect that you didn't know you had until you were 27? Yes. Yeah. What, is that, what does that mean? So I was, this is a bit name drop -y. Well, maybe I don't need to say who I was touring with, but I was touring with who someone. Who were you touring with? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I asked, okay. so it's okay. Uh, so I was playing guitar with John Mayer from 2013 to 2016, mm -hmm. and on that tour, I didn't sing background vocals, so it wasn't a big deal that I lost my voice, but I lost my voice. Uh, a, an incredible musician named Gabrielle Applin was opening up, and I was like, man, I lost my voice. Who should I go to? She said, go oh. to my doctor. Oh. So we were in London. I went to the doctor. He was like, ah, you might need to go get a scope. Got a scope, and the guy said, yeah, you know, you have a sulcus, which means a piece of your left fold is missing. Oh. So, like, to smack... Wow. Do you sing? Are you a singer? Uh, yes. Okay, so you know when you're phonating... Sorry. And you go, phonating. like... Phonating. Yeah, Everybody yeah. knows about phonating. So, basically, when you're phonating uh, <laughs> music, uh, vocally, when you're talking, your little vocal uh, folds are rubbing together, but if there's a dent in it, mm. it's airy. So, like, hey, everyone, how you doing? There's an air pocket. Oh. So, to compensate and sound like everyone else, I had to slam this thing inside of it, thus hemorrhaging and giving polyps to the top and bottom of my folds. Oh, so you were damaging your voice voice to overcompensate to make it sound connected because gotcha. all I could do was out of this thing and then um. suddenly I can do this because of uh, the surgery so surgery okay so I became a lead singer in 2014 whoa basically yeah that's so fascinating I'm very grateful for that um we're gonna name drop a little more okay. I mean you played with John Mayer mm -hmm. you've played with like you too, Thundercat, mm -hmm. a couple of Steves, Tyler, Wonder, you know. Yeah. Um, that was a weird story. The Wonder one is in the bio, but it, it, he just came on stage and played Superstition with this band I was playing with. And it, it really happened. Ah! I was like, well, and the bass player was like, I'm getting a second bass because I want to play too. So. Yeah. Yeah, that was weird. But it wasn't like he hired me. It was just, oh, I play, I, I did play with them. I got you, yeah. You know. But it's still freaking amazing. Yeah. Were you like, was that a surreal experience to play with Stevie yeah, Wonder? Yeah, because I grew up playing at blues bars, and yeah. the song we did that deviated from standard blues form was Superstition. Mm -hmm. That was like the guitar thing that you could... The song. Yeah. If you're a blues player, you could still justify that that was kind of a blues song. Yeah. So every Monday night at the jam sessions from age... 13, I started going to those when I was 13 to 18, and we played that like every week. Mm. I was like, I know this song. I know the actual riff. Everyone plays it wrong. I'm like, I know it. Mm -hmm. and it was fun. <laughs> yeah. I know it. Yeah. Watch this, Stevie. Yeah. Um, we do have some AMAs from the audience. Yes. They're super interested to know more about you, yes. Zane. Um, Say Cheese and Die 84 yes. uh, is wondering, are you using a deluxe memory man for that sweet, saturated delay sound? How do those you know? Those are some tech 
terms. So how do you, first off, Bodhi Day, who's the next question, is in my Twitch chat, and I love you, Bodhi. Okay. But say, Cheese, I don't think I've met you before. How did you know that? Yes, it was a deluxe memory, man. Um, next question. I mean, yeah, you're right. How did you hear that? You're insane. And it sounds great. Wow. Jeez. Thanks. Amazing. I have yeah. a feeling that person is a musician and probably a Yeah, guitarist. you must be. Because there are yeah. so many delays that mimic that sound. But uh, maybe you know about me because I, I have talked extensively about how that's my favorite delay pedal. Nice. So, yeah. All right. Bodhi Day, who you just mentioned yeah. and is often in your Twitch, is yes. wondering what you consider to be the best jazz city. You know, uh... That's Spokane, Washington. Oh, Stop. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, can I be honest? I shouldn't be honest in front of the camera, but I'm about to be. Be honest, please. So I grew up in L.A. as uh, You know this whole West Coast Get Down thing? We were talking about yes, West Coast Get so, Down. So as you, as you may notice, there isn't a guitar player. And wait, let's just say who yeah, the West Coast West Get Coast Down is. West Coast Get Down is, is Stephen Bruner, who's called Thundercat. It's Kamasi Washington. It's Cameron Graves. It's Brandon Coleman. It's It was me. But there's no guitar players. you'll notice in these things. Well, I was the guitarist and all those gigs with Ronald Bruner and all those guys. And then my band Carney moved... Not, we didn't move, we just toured a lot. So I left. And so I just was peacing out. So I thought LA was the best scene. Mm -hmm. And I would tell people in New York, like, you don't know what you're about to, like, in, give us 10 years, you're going to hear about us. And I'm not saying I'm a prophet, but like, you should read the Bible and see it. Maybe I am. <laughs> um, you know, Corinthians yeah. or something, Philippians? Uh, no, so anyway, long story short, I, I think LA has a, K Kamasi and I, I don't know if he coined the term or I did, but we would call it loud jazz. Mm. We'd be like, come to our gigs and you're going to hear loud jazz. Is it fusion? No, it's not fusion. It's loud jazz. It's just okay. jazz turned up to 11. Yeah. So I, I think L.A., but then again, New York, the honest part is I went to New York and I was trying to make friends over there and they, the guys I met were, were kind of mean to me. And I was mm. like, man, I, oh, you're an L.A. guy. I'm like, yeah, come on, man. Why are you going to be like that? Uh, so yeah. I want to say New York because the best stuff really is there, but some rude people to me. So Dang, I, was, I don't okay. know, dude. I don't know. Yeah. They're, no, they're I mean, all great. It's, it's hard to say the best and it's a little bit different everywhere. But it I is. will say, yeah, LA has an amazing jazz scene. Yeah. And there's folks that are from LA too that are incredible. Yes. Um, let's talk about some of your music. Um, I noticed a little bit of a trend perhaps where you like to drop music around your birthday or on your birthday. Oh, yeah, totally. I think you did that last year. Yep. And then this year you're doing it again. Your birthday's next Friday. Yeah, this Friday. This Friday? April 29th. Yeah. April 29th. Yes. Um, is there a reason like that you're choosing a birthday to do that? I think it actually is an accident the past couple of years. But then mm. again, I play. I headlined. Or that's such a way, dumb way to say it, but that's that's industry speak. But no, I played. <laughs> I played Troubadour and El Rey, and almost always each year, I would book a gig around my birthday. And at that time, I thought it was just like, yeah, then I can convince people it's to come. It's a good way to get people to come uh, out. Yeah. Maybe I'll sell that, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, for this one, uh, I don't know. I don't know why it happened the past two years, but I'm really grateful this year it's actually literally on my birthday. Yeah. Because the song is about, it's called I Want to Have Faith, and it's about my journey in general in life. And the past two years have been really challenging for all of us, and mm -hmm. I haven't released music in a long time, and it's an accidentally fitting song to release. Mm. It was just the first one that was ready and that I was excited about, so yeah. coincidence. Make sure you pre-save that song yes. so you can be alerted to purchase it and support your favorite artist. I like that. I like <laughs> and that. you talked about the last couple years, um, and I know you're on Twitch and you perform a lot. I mean, you post yeah. a lot of content, which mm -hmm. is really awesome and mm. exciting. Is that something that you've been doing more in the last couple years? Yeah, once the pandemic hit, I... I'd say like 95% of my income was touring. So mm -hmm. I was like playing with Mayer or playing with Johnny Lang. I was opening for him and playing with him and doing solo shows in Japan and Mexico. And like, I was the artist, typical artist who's like, I'm making money mostly doing my own shows and also playing with others. And then when it closed, I was like, oh, what am I going to do? That's right. like all the money. Yeah. So I, I thought about it. And then I talked to my therapist. All right, what's up? <laughs> I'm grateful that I could even have a therapist at that time because I know it's very expensive. But yes. I was very lucky to be able to have one. And uh, she was like, I think you need to do your, take a leap of faith. So I did. Mm. So I bought a computer and a streaming camera. And then as my chat can tell you, Atiko Kanadi, she's one of my mods and one of my favorite people. I'm sure Adrian's here. I've been upgrading ever since. And I've taken <laughs> it really seriously, like yeah. too seriously. <laughs> and I've probably streamed like at least 1,500 hours the past two wow. years. Just creating music online. Yeah. And connecting. And you've created a community. It's clear, mm -hmm. too, on it's there. Really which fun. is like really meaningful for folks. Yeah. Um, you have some shows coming up in L.A. as well. Yes. Oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah. With, with, uh, so I have a band with Evan, Rachel Wood. We're called yeah. Evan and Zane. And we're friends with Mike Garson, who's this incredible piano player, like a jazz legend genius, who also played uh, piano for David Bowie for like 40 years. Yeah. So we're wow. doing a gig on the 5th and 6th at the Sun Rose. And then... 5th and 6th of May. Yeah. yeah. Also, real quick, can I say something? Say something This is Twitch quick. chat, right? Yeah. So if you're watching and you're on Twitch, it means you probably 
like are insulated in this Twitch community and as cool as some of these other names are, uh, if you're like, who's that guy? I've seen him on Twitch. You might have seen me with an uh, Austin show. I did that talent show. It was awesome. I lost. <laughs> and then uh, Destiny and I do composition challenge stuff and Trainwreck and I had a co-stream. So if you're like, where have I seen this random dude? It's probably in one of those things. Yeah. Or just yeah. like on your Twitch because you have 20,000 followers. I do. But yes. Twitch is weird. Like I, <laughs> I, I've, I've averaged 25 viewers a stream. Then I've averaged 200. It's like very yeah. different depending no. on the momentum. I know. It's crazy. Yeah, Every it's day crazy. is different. Yeah. Well, it's been so fun having you today here right now in the present yeah. on school night on our channel what's up d prosper i see you in the chat by the way yes. is that <laughs> d prosper is hey, oh, on the east coast I believe. one more thing dude he yes. just said is that sir everyone thinks i'm sir massive streamer like 2,000 concurrent oh, wow. viewers i'm not sir i'm zane but i pop into his chat and we're gonna do a co-stream soon because oh, we were shit. laughing about it okay cool that's hilarious dude dark soul i, li I like your energy man nice <laughs> Well, you got to follow Zane Carney on his Twitch channel and uh, continue to confuse him with various people. Yes. <laughs> it's me. Again, the song, the new one, is dropping on your birthday this Friday. Yeah. Make sure you purchase it. Learn all the words. Yes. Go to the shows. The mm -hmm. tickets are available on your website, right? Yep, on my website. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Hello to folks in Aww. the chat. Hey, D Prosper. Thanks, D Prosper. Love you, too. So, D Prosper is part of this really cool party called Soul in the Horn. Oh, great. Um, which is one of the best, like dance parties you'll ever go to and most of the music has horns in it oh that the djs play oh and killer. then sometimes they'll have live musicians oh, so they're doing their own set and then they pull a horn up and play along to their well both yeah so like just the songs that are being spun are songs that have horns in the recordings Dope. Great. from all eras new and old and then they'll have live musicians sometimes like yourself people who like can play anything on the spot let's go you know what i'm saying you know that song you wrote about a bird yeah did you do you ever feel like you're that bird yeah when i wrote that song i it arrested me when he sent that video and, uh, our, my good friend the hounding who's one of my twitch uh supporter homies yeah um he g sent the song and it, it affected me so much because i sometimes have felt um, like when a relationship ends, it's not just, oh, this is going to suck, man, but it'll get better. There have been times where I've thought, this is like an extinction level event. And that's what that bird was going through. So yeah. it really, yeah, it really impacted me. And I've, I felt that way where I look over the world and it's not like, oh, there's a coffee shop. There's some other girls. It's like, no, there's <laughs> nothing. What is there for me anymore? I felt that way. And Dang so yeah. I would, I would imagine that bird did too. Like, where's, why is no female calling back? And maybe it knew, yeah, this is the end of not just me but our species and our genus because he was the last of that genus it's just yeah. crazy yeah it can get real deep you gotta hit me hard i don't yeah. know yeah yeah and that's just from someone who was following you on twitch yeah you said hey you want to do a live song composition yes that's incredible yeah man everything you do is just so creative and incredible even this like blue thing it's you just know, so bold this was a gift from obi cat <laughs> who's a patron of mine and she's the best and thank you obi cat also got to say hey to little dave What's yeah, up? Yeah, Good dig. to see you. Zane Carney, thank you so much. I feel like thank we could you. chat all day. This yeah. is just like Let's do starting. It. You, but we'll you, have to continue later because we have more musicians. Yeah, music, go get them. Yeah. Yes.